joining us right now to talk more about AI safety and the types of guardrails that might be needed is Anish Chopra. He's the former White House chief technology officer, now the president of Care Journey. And Anish, what, what do you think about this? Does this raise the risks um, that there will be compromises made in the name of progress? Well, I don't think it means compromises in the short run. This is definitely a long-term R&D effort, and it's an effort that countries around the world, including our own United States, a new AI Safety Institute, are focused on. So there is clearly a need to have AI safety research underway, well-funded and well-supported. What you're seeing in the open AI story is really a, a kind of a modernization or a maturation of a company that has to make trade-offs. And in today's environment, you can see the competition is clear and vigorous. And as you noted in that uh, tweet thread, basically uh, resources were reallocated from some of these uh, you know, longer term projects to sort of near term needs. Um, it is concerning uh, that you, know, you see certain unforced errors coming out of the OpenAI team more broadly. Uh, but on this particular matter, I think the long game is public private collaboration on safety. And the trade-off being that you think that it's going to be a less, less safe process over the long term? Well, one individual company uh, managing safety research for the entire sector may not be sufficient. You know, we saw this in social media where the companies didn't really work well together to establish guardrails. And we saw what we saw uh, in the social media misuse, if you will, misinformation challenges. So having more collaboration opportunities may be a net positive going forward. The key is we absolutely need as a society an understanding of the possibilities of these technologies. I'm an optimist, but there are obviously concerns and those need to be studied. And then we need a process by which the major companies, these frontier model companies, <laughs> incorporate them. Anish, you say that and I laugh because it sounds a little crazy to think, OK, we have this process that's taking place. We're going to move and we'll eventually see something. I mean, Facebook was founded 20 years ago, 2004. We still have not seen regulatory oversight that takes care of things like child exploitation. That's not to say that there aren't great things that these social media companies have brought, but self-regulation has fallen short, and Washington is behind the curve, as it always is with technology. I slight don't friendly see... amendment. Uh, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Let me, here's the slight friendly amendment. In social media, we didn't really have a mechanism for public-private negotiations on minimum standards. That just didn't happen. Here, in August of last year, uh, late July, the frontier model companies made a commitment to transparency on their red teaming and safety efforts, among other commitments. So there's now a mechanism where these companies are working hand-in-hand -hand with uh, the federal government, and you're seeing copies of this model overseas. So I think we're a little bit ahead of the curve uh, of where we were. You know what? I, I would disagree. I would take a look at this. And yeah. I think artificial intelligence can bring some really wonderful things to humanity. I am personally very excited about the aspects of medical advancement that could come from this, how we could improve people's lives, how we could cure diseases and find My passion. things. However, I share it. OK, so I'm excited about that aspect of it. I'm also worried about what this could mean if it's unleashed on society. A lot of people have compared this to what we've seen with Oppenheimer and the changes with nuclear, nuclear power um, and, you know, nuclear bombs that came with that. That is not something that we would leave up to a public-private partnership in the industry to sort of self-police itself. We would need regulatory oversight, like we do with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Yeah, let me just be very clear. We also have existing rules on the books for outcomes. So you cannot use the technology to discriminate on mortgage applications. You cannot use the uh, uh, technology to discriminate on your health care. So the agencies that have outcomes focused uh, regulatory authority, those sectors have made it clear publicly that just you can't use the dog ate my homework excuse. The AI is not going to get you a hall pass that you've no, somehow. I, I'm worried about things beyond.